Since we've been talking about putting our host in maintenance mode and taking our host out of maintenance mode, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about our capacity view inside of vCenter. I'm gonna start off by clicking on our cluster, clicking on monitor, and then scrolling all the way down to capacity. And that's underneath our vCN section. We're gonna be starting out with our capacity overview. This tells us with how much space we're using and how much free space do we have. But this is a little bit different than a traditional SAN. With a traditional SAN, we would carve out a RAID 5 LUN or a RAID 1 LUN, and that's how much storage space we have. But with vSAN, we can customize our storage policies on a per object basis. So going back to our storage policy video, we created three VMDKs, one with a RAID 5 policy, one with a RAID 1 policy, and one with a RAID 0 policy. And each of those has different storage impacts in our environment. So this 27 gigs, this is the amount of raw space that we have in the environment, and then we can use whichever storage policy to maximize that as much as possible. Underneath it, we've got our reservations and we've got our alerts. In older versions of vSAN, this used to be called Slack space. When I say older versions of vSAN, I mean our vSAN 6 line. We used to call this Slack space, and we would recommend somewhere between 25 to 30% Slack space available. That allows to do rebuilds, change storage policies, increase our VMDK sizes, et cetera, et cetera. Just having that space available for us. Starting in 7.0 U1, we changed it to capacity reserve. We changed the naming, and we also changed how much storage we need to set aside. And that's where this comes into play. By default, this is disabled, and we can enable it. And we've got our warning, and we've got our alert on here saying, okay, if we fill up to this amount of space, we should trigger alert or trigger warning. And if I hover my mouse over it, we can see what does that percentage look like. Jumping ahead just a little bit, at the bottom, we can see our custom alerts. This will allow us to set those warnings if we want to have something different. Maybe we want to be notified at 60%. And that allows us to get a procurement order in so we can order some more equipment. We want to check this real quick and talk about our operations reserve. Operations reserve allows for transient operations. So a transient operation would be something that's temporary. We temporarily need to do something like changing a storage policy, going from our RAID 1 policy over to our RAID 5 policy. Something that's not long-term, but something that's gonna happen periodically if we need to use it. And typically we enable this, it takes up about 5% of our storage capacity. The next one is our host build reserve. This sets aside the amount of capacity from one of our nodes. Let's say we've got a four node vSAN cluster, and each one has five terabytes worth of storage. We set aside one of those nodes, not actually setting aside of it, but we're reserving five terabytes worth of storage to allow for those rebuild operations in case we had a failure in the environment, or we needed to rebuild some objects from a host being in maintenance more than 60 minutes. As we start scaling our nodes up, and this is where the value and the benefit of this comes in. Let's say we've got a 10 node cluster, and we want to reserve the capacity of one of our nodes. When else one, over 10, or it's 10% of our environment is how much we're setting aside. So instead of setting aside 20 to 30% all the way across the entire cluster, now we're only setting aside 10%. Or if we had 20 nodes, it would be 5%. So as we add more nodes, the amount of space that we recommend setting aside becomes much smaller. If we don't have it enabled, we could fill that vSAN data store almost up to 100%. We put a couple guardrails in place so we couldn't go to exactly 100% but we could pretty much fill it all the way up. And if we had an outage, that would not allow for us to do a rebuild in the environment. So if we did have the setting enabled and we tried to create a new VM, it would say, sorry, we cannot create this because it would have violate our host rebuild reserve. I'm gonna go click on cancel and let's talk about our what if analyzer next. Our what if analyzer allows us to do some modeling, some forecasting. It says we've got 27 terabytes worth of free space. What happens if I chose a RAID 1 policy versus a RAID 5 policy, versus a RAID 6 policy, or a RAID 0 policy. What would that storage look like in the environment? Right now it's set to our vSAN default storage policy, which is a RAID 1 FTT of 1 policy. If we were to change it over to RAID 5, we can see what that new storage would look like in the environment. We can see that would give us a free space of 20 gigs compared to our RAID 1 policy or our default data store policy, which would allow for 13 gigs worth of storage. Next is oversubscription. Just like with CPU and memory, we can oversubscribe our vSAN data store. If we were to use 100% of all the objects we've currently deployed, we can see we're using 169 gigs or 2.66 times the amount of storage that our vSAN data store can support. And that's just something to keep an eye on. If it comes time where we need to add some more resources, what does that oversubscription look like? Next is our usage breakdown. 
This tells us what type of data are we storing on our vSAN data store. And we break this into three different categories. So let's start out with our VM category first. We've got primary, we've got replica, home objects, and swap objects. Primary is what data are we writing to our physical disks? These will be our VMDKs. We've got some documents in there, we got some email in there, we've got some slideshows, et cetera, et cetera. This is the data we're writing to our physical disk. Our replica data is the metadata about those objects. Underneath that, we've got our VM home objects. This is our namespace objects, storing a configuration file for our VM, CPU, memory, et cetera, et cetera. Storing our VMware.log file, when we power it on, power it off, do a reset on it, or take a snapshot. And it stores our friendly name. What did we call it? We call this VM vCenter. We called it mail. We called it database. What do we call it? Underneath that, we've got our swap objects. Starting in vSAN 6.7, they were thin provisioned by default. In the older versions, we could do it via command line, but after vSAN 6.7, that became the default behavior. Our next category is our user objects. These are items we put on the vSAN data store, but not registered into vCenter. So for example, ISOs or vSTOR replication or unregistered VMs. So if I walk through the process of unregistering one of our VMs, doing a refresh, we can see that our user object space has increased or how much space we're using and our VM category has decreased. Our last category is our system usage. This is the space being used by vSAN to provide services like our performance service. When we check the box, we start capturing those metrics. That's recorded here. And just as a quick side note, our performance service will typically capture metrics for 90 days. There's a couple of variables that come into play, but it's roughly 90 days. And once you get to the end of those 90 days, we'll start eating our tail or we'll start deleting that old record or those old metrics and replacing them with new metrics. So we'll continue repeating that pattern. So you can see in this particular environment, we're using 1.8 gigs of storage for performance service. Underneath that, we've got our file system overhead. This is the space being used by our on-disk format for our capacity tier. Our capacity tier has a file format system. This is the overhead space associated with it. In this particular environment, 2.39 gigs. Lastly, we've got our checksum overhead. We introduced checksums in vSAN 6.2. For every single 4K block of data, we create a five byte checksum. There's one more thing I wanna talk about before we wrap up this video, and that's our capacity history. So we're gonna click on that tab. Our capacity history allows us to go back in time and see how much storage space have we been using. We can go back 30 days. I don't think I've had this lab available for 30 days. So let's put in 15 so you can see what does that look like. And we can see on that particular date, we had a drop in capacity. And then a few days later, we had an increase in capacity. If I put in 31 days, it'll pop up a message saying we only do 30 days. At this point, I think we've covered a lot of information in our capacity view. Let's wrap up this video. We talked about four different sections. We start out with our overview. How much space were we using and how much total raw space did we have available? We went a little bit deeper in that section and also talked about our reserve capacity, our operations reserve, and our host rebuild reserves, setting aside that space in case we can do a rebuild operation. From there, we talked about our what if analyzer. Since we had that total raw capacity with that free space, what if we chose different storage policies from a RAID 1, a RAID 5, or a RAID 0? How that impact our storage space? From there, we went to our usage breakdown and looked at how much space was our VMs taking up, maybe our ISOs or unregistered VMs, we looked at our performance service, what kind of data are we putting on our vSAN data store, and what is that space taking up? From there, we went to our history overview, or to say we went to our capacity overview to see how much space had we been using over the last 30 days. I hope you found this video informative. I'd like to thank you for watching.